<laughs> okay, hi. I just bumped into a lamp over here, but everything's fine. Okay, good morning. We are going to get started about vectors again this morning today. Um, I have a long list of videos here to make. We're going to go through p-vector syntax, basic vector math. We're going to look at this thing called acceleration. We're going to get into Newton's laws and forces. And we're really, by the end of this string of videos, there's maybe five or six or seven we're going to get through, we're going to have our first physics engine. We're going to be simulating bodies in our world responding to forces. It's very exciting. Um, whew, OK, so, but what are we going to do? This video, this video's sole purpose is just to begin to feel comfortable with p-vector syntax. What do I mean by p-vector? So p-vector, affectionately known as p-vector, um, is a class in processing. You might be familiar with p-image or p-image, p-image, or p-font, 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 p-font. Anyway, um, the, there, there are lots of built-in classes in processing to describe an image, a font, a capture object, a movie object, a serial object. This is hopefully something you're familiar with having used processing. We're going to learn about a new class today called p-vector. p-vector is going to store the components of a vector. If you remember from the previous video, a vector which can be represented as an arrow, direction, which way is the arrow pointing, magnitude, how long is that arrow, has components. There is an x component and a y component. Now, in truth, the p-vector class also stores a z component. But for the purpose of these videos that we're doing now, we're going to ignore 3D. <laughs> it's a very uncomfortable, strange place to be in 3D. It's, it's just living in two dimensions. You could just kind of you know, be yourself, really. Anyway, um, OK, so this is what we're going to do. Now, um, we need to get into actual vector math. What does it mean to add, a ve add vectors, multiply, dot product, magnitude, normalizer, all these functions we're going to get to. But first, I just want to look at something really basic. What if we have a program that has an x and a y variable? What if we want to store those x's and y's right, together in one vector object? So. What we can now do is say p vector v, or you know maybe for the sake of argument, I'm going to say position. Or in fact, in all my I kind of like the variable name position better. But in all my ver my examples, for some reason, I use the word location. I don't know. Maybe I'm into real estate or something. Okay, uh, p vector location. We're instead of having a separate x and y, we're going to say a p vector location. Now. When you have an x and a y, you might say x equals 100, y equals something. Instead, we're going to say location equals a new p vector 100, 50, for example. I don't know. Can you see all that? I think comma 50 is cut off. But you can imagine, comma 50 parentheses semicolon. OK, so what is going on here? Primitive variable. The name is x. The data type is float object variable. The name is location. The data type is p-vector. Whenever you make an object, bubble b, ball b, what kind of objects do people make in processing? I don't know, fish f, right? Then you say, make a new fish, make a new ball, make a new bubble, right? We are instantiating that object. We do the same thing with p-vector. p-vector uh, location, we say location is a new instance of a p-vector object, and the constructor takes two or three arguments. So in our case, we're dealing with two-dimensional vectors, uh, p-vector 100, 50. <laughs> everybody OK? Everybody, every, I don't know if there is an everybody. Is there an everybody? I don't know. Maybe you're like a large group of people just sitting in some strange audience watching this video. I seriously doubt that. OK, um, so now that we're comfortable with this, let's go look at a real-world processing example. OK, here we have your kind of standard uh, uh, processing example. You have a bouncing ball sketch. You have a ball object B. You make a new ball. B moves. It bounces. It displays. This is your basic stuff that we're, we're used to. But let's actually now switch over to the ball tab. This is where things matter. Now look, we have an x and a y and an x speed and a y speed. This is where we need to rewrite our code using vectors. OK, I don't know why I'm staring over here like really intently. OK, so instead of, let's close this here. It's, it's distracting. Instead of an x and y, I want to say p vector location. So I'm just going to write that in there. And I'm actually just going to delete those. Now, 
we have another pair of x's and y's. x speed, y speed. We know down in the move function, x speed changes x, y speed changes y. We're going to do the same thing, but with vectors. So instead of an x speed and a y speed, we are going to say p vector, and I'm going to call this velocity. Now it turns out velocity is, going, is a key concept in that we're going to build into our physics engine. If an object has a position, how that position changes over time is its velocity. Velocity is a vector that get, provides directions for how that object's position should change from one moment to the next. So position is x comma y. Velocity here is x speed comma y speed. That's the sort of that's the conceptually the thing we're doing. Okay. So now we have to look at the constructor. We initialized x and y separately, x speed and y speed separately. Now we're going to do that with vectors. Okay. Now we're going to say location equals new p vector, same values. And velocity equals new p vector. Can you hear that t -t 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 typing? I don't know. Is that like a, a nice soothing sound for you? Uh, right? So we can see here, all I'm doing is replacing each individual variable uh, being, in, being initialized individually. Each individual variable. I would restart this video, but I just, I, too much to do. Too much to do. You're just going to have to live with my weird ramblings. OK. Um, Velocity, uh, now we initialize it as a p-vector with two arguments. Got it. All right, we're good. Dun, 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 dun. Now we run it. Of course, we have an error. OK, x equals x plus x speed. OK, we need to stop here for a moment. Uh, well, maybe we don't. We will stop here in a moment. But let's actually, let's just look at this. Look, x changes for x speed, y changes by y speed. Well, instead of x and y, instead of x speed and y speed, we have location and velocity. I know. I know. I got it. OK, here's what we're going to write, right? Location equals location plus velocity. Right? That's the same thing. Instead of two variables each getting changed by their corresponding x speed, y speed, now we have one variable getting changed by velocity. Look, that's got to be perfect, right? Uh, there's, what could possibly be wrong with this? I think it's great. I think this is how the code should be. Let's run it. OK, now, I don't know if you can see this. Oh, the zoom worked. The operator huh, plus, <laughs> if I go underneath here, the operator plus is undefined for the argument types processing quick core, not p vector, processing that core, not p vector. It's freaking out, right? What's happening here? OK, so now we do need to stop for a moment and go back to the board. OK, so let's think about what the plus operator means. We know writing plus in code works quite often. x equals 5 plus 2. That works. We get the value 7, 5 plus 2. We can even do something like s, if s was a string, equals a, b, plus c, d. What does plus mean when it comes to strings? It means concatenation. We get a, b, c, d. So plus with numbers means add. Plus with strings means concatenate. Now what if we have p vector uh, v and u and w, for example. And I said w equals v plus u. So these are p vector objects. The thing is, uh, you just can't do that. <laughs> It's very sad. I don't go sad. It would be nice. And there are some other programming languages and environments that allow you to use this plus operator with objects. But processing doesn't know how to say a vec p vector plus another p vector any more than it knows how to say a p font plus another p font or a p image plus another p image. So yes, we want to do addition. But addition, the plus operator is reserved only for primitive numbers and for strings. So in order to add two p vectors together, we have to use methods that are in the p vector class. Those methods, we can make a list of them. Add, subtract, multiply. There's going to be normalize, dot product, cross product, limit. Oh my, my goodness, <laughs> there's so many. We could go through the whole list. I could walk over there. We could look at the list. That's what the next video is going to be about. So the next video, I want to go through some of these functions and what the math behind them means. For now, let's just take a little step into adding vectors. So what was the situation we had? We had uh, x equals x plus x speed before we had vectors. And we had the same for y. Now we think we have location. I'm going to shorthand these. Loc equals loc plus velocity. Well, by the way, there's a shorthand, x plus equals x speed, which means add x speed to x. 
And in fact, the add method in the p vector class, we can say this, loc dot add velocity. What this means is take this vector and add it to that. We're going to look again at the details of addition in the next video, but you can kind of guess what that means. Add the x of velocity to the x of location. Add the y of velocity to the y of location. Why? Because here is locations, x comma y. Add the, some x value, add some y value, and now here's the new location. So we add the velocity vector to the location, which is kind of like a vector from the origin. <laughs> I'm like, ah, I can't move. There's a wall here. Move this wall. Um, and then we get our new location. So this is what we're doing. Now let's go back to our code. Maybe, I, I kind of feel like you might have a question right now. You should ask that question in some format that I don't know what exists. There, you can, um, if you're watching this on Vimeo, you can make a comment below at least. I'll answer it that way. Um, OK, so uh, here we are over here. Now we know that instead of this line of code, the, co the correct thing we write is velocity.add, oh, sorry, location.add velocity. Location.add velocity is the same thing as saying add velocity to location and store it back in itself. Location equals location plus velocity. That's what we're doing. Now, now we run it. And ah, look at this. If the x location is greater than width or less than 0, that's where we reverse the direction. So all of that is for the bouncing. So here's the thing about vectors. For the most part, what we want to do, <laughs> I don't know why I feel the need to come over here, is do stuff like this. We want to deal with vector operations between vectors. We don't really want to get into the components individually. It's kind of like that object-oriented principle of encapsulation. We just want to drive the car. While we're driving the car, we don't want to be messing with the wiring. The x and y components are really the wiring of that object. But sometimes we can't help ourselves. We need to just do something to the x. Like we need to just know, did the x part of this object's vector get past the end of the screen? And this is a case where that's true here in this uh, bounce function. So I'm going to say if location.width or location.x, and <laughs> I was so smart I thought to size my window properly, then here, what do I want to reverse? I want to say velocity.x reverses direction. So I'm just changing everywhere here. Now I'm just kind of, it's not very exciting, but this is, I'm just using the, the x and y components of these uh, vectors appropriately. And now when we want to, and certainly when we want to draw an object, we want to display it on the screen. That is a moment where we need to access the individual components. So all the drawing functions and processing generally, ellipse, rectangle, line, la, la, da, they all want an x location and a y location. right? We can't say draw an ellipse just with this vector object, <laughs> um, although we could make a request that those would all be implemented. But I, I don't know. I think I like it this the way it is. It's fine. We need to access the individual components to draw the object to that location. So I think we've gotten this right. We have our two p vectors. In the objects constructor, we initialize them. In the move function, velocity gets added to the location. That's what we do. Every frame, every frame. Location change my velocity. Location change my velocity. Location change my velocity. And then when the only other functionality we do is, hey, if we get to the edge, yeah, we should turn around. We want to stay on the screen. That's what we want to do. And then we want to draw ourselves. So here we are. <laughs> this is a moment. Now, I, I kind of hope that something went wrong so we can discover it. I, I kind of feel like we got it all right, though. But one of these days, something will go wrong and we'll discover the problem. I was going to say live in real time, but it's only live for me. I can, we, this system will stream, by the way. So we'll do some live stuff where we can almost feel as if we, we know each other together in, in some way. <laughs> Maybe you don't want to get any closer. <laughs> I would understand. OK. Uh, Hey, OK, it worked. So um, this, is, this marks the end of this particular video. Um, what I would suggest to you before moving on to the next one, and we sort of, I mentioned this in the previous video, is find a sketch of yours. I'm sure you got one that's got x's and y's all over the place. Just try rewriting it with vectors with the identical functionality. Don't make it do anything different. If you get stuck, you can always just revert to saying, wherever you had x, say the vector.x. Wherever you had y, say the vector.y. Try to use some of the functions in the vector class, like add, if you can. But you, you know, don't worry yet. We're going to through the, go through all those in the next video. I really hope this one worked, because I feel like I, this is like a one take one, and I feel like it's not the worst one ever made. OK, uh, see you later. Uh, i got to find the clicker to stop. Goodbye.